Hey, welcome back, everybody. And today we're going to do another Freight Broker Bootcamp Live. It's Monday at noon. And as you guys know, every Monday at noon, I do a live training on a different freight broker or freight agent related topic. And today we're going to talk about the number one reason why every freight broker needs a CRM. So I'm going to dive into that, right? We're going to, we're going to pull that apart today. We're going to talk about it at the top of the hour. And then uh, we're going to do some Q&A on the back end. And I have a special announcement, a special announcement that you're definitely not going to want to miss. So stick around to the end because I am going to be sharing some more details about this special announcement. So at the top of the hour, we are going to talk about uh, the number one reason why freight brokers need a CRM. Then we're going to do some Q&A and we're also going to do a special announcement that I think some of you guys have been waiting for. So I've kind of been teasing it for a while. Some of you might know what's about to happen here, but uh, <clears throat> we'll get into a little bit more details for now. Let's do some shout outs. Type in the chat box, the city and state where you're logging in from. Let me know where you're from. For those of you that don't know me, I'm from the Buffalo, New York area. <clears throat> My name is Dennis Brown. I've been an entrepreneur for over 25 years. Been very, very blessed, built three multi-million dollar companies in my career, started a freight brokerage with no experience uh, in 2003, went on to grow that to about $80 million a year in sales, and then sold that company. I've also had, I also have a program called Freight Broker Bootcamp. I've had that for over a decade. It's the most cost-effective and comprehensive online freight broker training program available today. So if you're curious about becoming a freight broker, you can check that out, right? You're here for some reason. You're either a student of mine already or maybe you're, you've kind of been debating on whether you were going to become a freight broker, freight agent. If you're curious about that, feel free to check it out. Been in business over 10 years with that program. I've trained over 8,000 students. And, um, and you know, we, we offer a 60-day 100% money back guarantee. So if there's any issues, no questions asked, you'll get your money back. So if you're curious about that, check it out. But today we're going to talk about the number one reason why every freight broker needs a CRM. But now what I'm going to talk about first is give some shout outs to some people in the audience. Frank from Rio Rancho in New Mexico. Welcome. <clears throat> Let's see. What do we got? Patrick from Lake Mary, Florida. Welcome. Sarah from Bakersfield, California. Dove Sauer from New York. Wow. We just did a big skip here. Hold on a second. I hate when I hate when the software does that. All right. Cynthia from District Height, Maryland. Welcome. Patrick. Welcome. Jason from Atlanta. Welcome. Eduardo from Las Vegas. Welcome. Uh, welcome. I'm Rodriguez211 from Memphis, Tennessee. Welcome. Frank from, uh, well, he enrolled last week, but I don't know where he's from. Welcome, Sarah. Welcome, Atari from Martin, Tennessee. Welcome, Chuck's Buggy from Columbus, Ohio. Welcome, Priscilla from Sacramento. Uh, welcome, Regina from Rineville, Kentucky, who is also a student. Welcome, Cindy. Welcome, Cindy Kane from Houston. She's always here. Welcome, Cindy. Uh, welcome, Aisha. Uh, welcome, Kendra from Corpus Christi, Texas. Welcome, Chad from Fredericksburg, Texas. Welcome, Dina from Siler City, North Carolina. Welcome, Renee from Dallas. Uh, welcome Andre Richards from Toronto, Canada. Now we've got two countries in the house. Let's see what else we come up with. Welcome Sally Mitchell from Philadelphia, Patrick from Lake Mar uh, Mary, Florida, Willie from Fresno, Marisha from Los Angeles, Ernest from Dallas, Teresa from Bowie, Maryland. Welcome Val from Santa Clarita, California. Welcome, welcome, welcome Michael Ross from New York. Welcome Cheryl, ah, I'm, I might be screwing it up. I'm sorry. If I murder your name, I apologize. It's either my lack of English or the really small type or a combination of the two. <laughs> Welcome Steve Hunt from Glendale, Arizona. Tiara from Atlanta. Uh, uh, Sarah, G uh, Sarah from Bakersfield. Benjamin from Rancho Cucamonga. All right, so we're going to wrap it up with Rat Rancho Cucamonga because the fact that that's the name of a city kind of cracks me up, but it's kind of cool also. But today, that's not why we're here. I thank you all for joining me. I thank you for joining me, whether this is on replay. If you're catching this on replay, hit hashtag replay in the, in the comments. I'd love to hear from you on replay. Even though we're not live, I'd love to hear from you. Uh, and I want to thank you for joining me on replay or live. I do these trainings every week. They stream on both Facebook and YouTube. So you guys can check them out on either one of those channels. 
Plus, there's always a replay after the fact if you guys want to come back and check it out. For those of you that want additional training, right, additional training for free, additional free freight broker training, you definitely need to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Go on YouTube or if you're already on YouTube, uh, Freight Broker Bootcamp or Dennis Brown, whatever you or both, and you'll find my channel, right? And at that point, you definitely want to, you'll see a picture of my bald head <laughs> uh, and you'll see the Freight Broker Bootcamp logo. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you click the bell to get notified because I release a new Freight Broker training every single week, all right? So you don't want to miss that and that's to how you'll ensure to get notified. So, all right, guys. So let's let's pull this apart here. Today, we are here to talk about the number one reason why every freight broker needs a CRM, okay? This is an important topic. But before I dive into why, first I'm gonna talk a little bit about what a CRM is because not everybody's familiar with what the, the terminology CRM stands for. CRM stands for Customer Relationship Management, okay? So what a CRM is, is a technology that allows your company to manage all of your customers and potential customers data and information, right? It allows you to record all of those interactions. It allows you to record, it's a repository for all of your customer and prospect data. Now, as you can imagine, this is really, really important because you've all heard it before, the fortune is in the follow-up when it comes to sales. A CRM is a freight broker's and or a salesperson's best friend, okay, if and when it's used properly. So I'm going to share with you five uh, CRMs that I think will work really well for freight brokers and freight agents, particularly if you're in startup mode, right? Uh, but we're going to get to that a little bit further down the road. But a CRM, again, is a customer rela relationship management tool. It's software and it's web-based. You don't have to install it on your PC. They're all web-based now, much like a load board or much like any other software. You sign up and you have the ability to manage all of your customer and prospect data. Now, why is that important? Okay. Number one, it's a repository for all your contacts. Every person that you call, every person that you talk to, every person that you prospect needs to be in your CRM because you need a record of who they are. Number one, you need their company name. You need the logistics manager or traffic manager's name, whoever the decision maker is. You need their phone number. You need their email. You need a summary of the conversation that you had with them. You need the details associated with every prospect that you talk to. Because if you don't have them in one repository, if you don't have them in one location, you are going to lose them. Okay? That's what's going to happen. And so that repository allows you to save a ton of information, right? It allows you to save contact data, conversations, you know, uh, quotes or bids that you've done, right? on different lanes. Um, you know, it allows you to save a lot of time with automation that's built into the software. It gives you reporting capabilities, right? The ability to run reports and understand your pipeline, right? So there's a lot of benefits to having a CRM. But the number one reason, here it is, the number one reason why every freight broker needs a CRM is because it will help you to increase sales. Everything I've just shared with you, everything you've just heard up to this point, and the entire technology is designed with the primary focus of helping a business to increase sales. With a CRM, you will do more sales with a CRM than you will without a CRM, okay? So if I took a 100 freight brokers and we did a contest. We did 100 freight brokers that were brand new who did not have a CRM. And they spent the first six months with their efforts to try to reach out and, and start creating business, calling on prospects, getting customers, quoting freight, following up and doing all that. That's group A. They have no CRM. Maybe they're doing it on paper or in a folder or on some sort of a spreadsheet. Just basic, right? And then I took another 100 freight brokers and we did... we 
we armed them with a proper CRM. We trained them on how to use that CRM and they leveraged that CRM for the same amount of time. I'm going to tell you that all things being equal, the CRM group is definitely going to outperform the non-CRM group. Okay. I don't know the exact numbers, but my guess would be it would probably group B, the CRM group would probably outperform the non-CRM group at least five to one. Okay. At least five to one. It might be 10 to one. Okay. And over time, the return on investment is even bigger because the more data you have, the more information you have, the more prospects you contact, the more customers you have, the more difficult it is to manage that data. Spreadsheets just won't cut it. Putting it into a folder just won't cut it. Putting it on paper is just not going to cut it when you have hundreds or thousands of prospects, which in every business, particularly as a freight broker, or freight agent, you are going to have. You, over the course of your first year, you're going to talk to, you know, thousands of people, right? It, it, either by email or by phone or face-to-face, -face, whatever that case may be. You are going to have a lot of conversations with those prospects and you're going to have a lot of data, contact information, emails, you know, quotes and bids that you've done. So having a CRM is a critical tool for the long-term success of any business. But as a freight broker, and the fact that, that freight brokers and freight agents have a very sales-oriented business, it's a critical, critical tool, okay? So, so we talked about what is a CRM, right? It's a repository for all this data. We talked about some of the primary benefits of the CRM, with the number one benefit being it helps you to increase sales. Now, let's talk about some different CRMs. If you were to go search Google for sales CRM, you will come back with probably, if I had to guess, I don't remember what it is, you'll probably come back with over a million results, probably millions of results, right? Now, the fact is there are thousands and thousands of different providers out there that sell this type of technology, but there are some technologies that are geared towards more enterprise, really large clients, you know, com companies that have thousands of employees and thousands of salespeople. There are some CRMs that are designed for med medium sized companies that maybe have 100 or 500 or maybe even 1,000 employees. And there's some of these CRMs that are designed more for small businesses and startups. And so today I'm going to share with you five CRMs that I have personally vetted. And that I have personally understand and have looked at and either used myself and have purchased and paid for during my career, or I have looked at behind the scenes pretty extensively as a way to help vet this process for you. Now, there, there are tons of choices for you out there, right? You have tons of options. But my goal is to narrow this down and to make those decisions easier for you. Because right now you have a lot of decisions to make as a freight broker. And Having a CRM, you know, we've talked about in the past, having a transportation management software. Just so you know, a TMS and a CRM are different. They're two different tools. Now, sometimes TMSs may have a CRM component built into it, but it's not a CRM. It's not designed specifically to be a CRM. So uh, don't get confused. A TMS, a transportation management software, is the is the software that allows you to manage all of your orders and all of your freight, right? And all your customer freight and all your carrier relationships. A CRM focuses more on your sales relationships, your customer relationships, your customer conversation, your customer data, and your prospect data, which is, which is what the bulk of your CRM is going to consist of is prospects because you're always going to have a lot more prospects than you will customers. Just part of the natural part of being in business. So I'm going to share with you five uh, CRMs. So here they are, okay? And these are in no discernible order. I'm just going to share them with you uh, so that you guys can do additional research and see what might be the best for you, okay? So number one is HubSpot. HubSpot is a CRM. It's been around for a long time, got a great reputation. Matter of fact, they even have a free version of their software. Now, many of these softwares are going to have like a free trial, some of these softwares are actually going to be free. And then if you want, you can add additional features later, which are paid type upgrade features. But HubSpot, okay? 
You can check out HubSpot Sales CRM. It's a great tool. Uh, there, it's been tested and proven over many, many years. It's a lot of B2B service companies and a lot of B2B sales organizations rely on HubSpot as their CRM. I've used it. It's a great tool. Okay, so that's number one. Number two, which is one of my personal favorites, is Pipe Drive. Okay, Pipe Drive is a great tool. I like it as a CRM because it's very easy and it's very logical and it's a little different than most CRMs. It kind of has a workflow process that just is very logical that allows you to customize it and set it up specific to your business. That's pipe drive is number two. Number three is another one that I've used extensively is Zoho CRM. That's Z-O-H-O CRM. It's a very cost-effective solution. It has a lot of options, very robust. You find a lot of small businesses using Zoho CRM. It's a great option for you guys to check out. Number four is kind of the, the gorilla in the room. It's the one that's kind of taken over the CRM space over the last decade, and that is Salesforce, right? Salesforce is the one you may have heard of. Uh, Salesforce is a great tool. There's a reason why they've become so popular uh, and why they've done so well in the small and medium-sized business market. And it would be definitely a good option for you to check out. For some of you, it may be too cost prohibitive. For some of you, it made me a little bit too robust and too many features that you don't need. But I will tell you, it's always nice to have those features. It's better to have them and not need them than to need them and not have them, okay? So you definitely wanna check out Salesforce. And then the last one, which is kind of a newer one to my list, you know, I did a little bit of research on this last year and I reviewed it again here this past week as I was preparing for this live. And that is Less Annoying CRM. It's kind of a catchy, cool name. It's called Less Annoying CRM. And it's designed to be less annoying, right? One of the things about CRMs that salespeople don't like, uh, it takes a lot of that out. A few of the things, you know, data entry and administrative tasks are things that salespeople don't typically like to do, right? Because administrative tasks don't give you a direct ROI. Entering data into your CRM doesn't give you a direct ROI. The only thing that gives you a direct ROI is being on the phone or face-to-face -face or having conversations with your prospects. And so less annoying CRM is designed to make it less annoying as a salesperson. So those are five CRMs. Quick, re quick recap, HubSpot, Pipe Drive. Zoho CRM, Salesforce, and Less Annoying CRM. Those are the five that I would recommend you check out. There are hundreds of, hundreds of other options that you can feel free to check out. I think you couldn't, I don't think you could go wrong with any of those five I recommended. And so again, the number one reason why every freight broker needs a CRM is to help them increase sales. It will increase your sales over time because of the, the built-in capabilities of having that that repository of data, the transparency into your pipeline, the ability to follow, schedule follow-ups, make sure you're not missing those conversations with your important prospects, customer data retention, and a whole bunch of other great benefits of having a CRM. So I hope that guys helped, that helped you guys. If it did, then uh, make sure you like the stream. Make sure you like and share the stream. The only way we hear other people can hear about this and understand the value of this information is if you share the stream. Again, I didn't char I don't charge for these free freight broker bootcamp lives. These are absolutely free. You can check them out on Facebook or you can check them out on YouTube. And uh, I appreciate you guys being here. We're going to do some live Q and a, okay. We're going to do some live Q and a, and uh, I'm going to grab a quick drink. We're going to do some live Q and a, and then, you know, I'll make that special announcement and then we'll wrap it up. We'll try to get out of here early today. Um, hold tight. I'm going to get a, grab a quick drink. You guys can, um, just hold tight for a second and, uh, and we'll get started. Okay. Mm. Man, you talk fast and all of a sudden, uh, you know, you, you're parched. You can barely, you can barely talk anymore. So give me just a minute here to, to hydrate and we'll get the ball rolling. All right, so I got a question for you guys. How many of you in the audience, before we go into Q&A, how many of you in the audience have ever used a CRM? 
Okay. How many of you in the audience have ever used a CRM? And if you have say yes, and then give me the name of the CRM that you've used in the past. I would love to hear from you. I'd love to hear your feedback. Uh, what CRMs have you used in your previous career, their previous life, or maybe in your current job? Uh, I'd love to hear back from you guys. And then we will get in some questions. Okay. We'll definitely get in some Q and A. I'll try to answer some questions for you. Have any of you used a CRM in the past? And just so you know, in case you missed it, Sherilyn Gonzalez did a little quick recap for us. Here's the five. Pipe, HubSpot, Pipedrive, Zoho, Salesforce, less annoying CRM. There's the five if you guys want to jot them down, okay? Feel free to jot them down. Thank you, uh, Sherlyn. Sherlyn Gonzalez. Santana, Santana. Awesome. Beautiful name. So, all right. So have any of you used a CRM? All right. So Michelle has used a CRM um, from the administrative end. Uh, Elio's used a CRM for Keller Williams as, as, a, uh, as a real estate agent. Yeah, I'm not surprised at that. Uh, Sergio has used Salesforce. Yep. Nicole has used uh, Talisma. Talisma. I've never heard of that. Cool. Uh, so yeah, a bunch of people have used CRMs, but I would say the vast majority of the people in the audience and the vast majority of people that have taken my course don't really understand what a CRM is. And that's the reason why I wanted to talk about it today because it's very misunderstood. It's different than a transportation management software, um, but it is important because it will help you to make more money. Now, you know, technology can sometimes be a little bit overwhelming, but the five that I gave you are usually, I, th I think those will be fairly easy for you to get up and running with any one of them, any one of them and pretty cost effective, depending upon what your budget is. They're not going to, most of them are not going to be free. Some of them will be free like HubSpot. Others will have some free trials. Um, but yeah, I think these are all great options for you guys. So all right. So listen here, I, I can't hold it anymore. I can't hold it. We're going to do the Q and a, but before the, we do the Q and a, I want to make the special announcement. Who wants to hear the special announcement? Okay. Who wants to hear the announcement that many of you, as a matter of fact, over 300 of you have specifically been waiting for who wants to hear the special announcement. Talk to me peeps. Let's see what you got. Because this has been on my mind for a while, and I've been teasing this for over a month now, and the time is finally here, okay? So here's the announcement. The announcement is simple. M most of you by now, unless you're brand new to the community, have already heard about my new Freight Broker Sales Accelerator program that's about to launch, okay? Okay. So my Freight Broker Sales Accelerator program is separate from my Freight Broker Bootcamp. So if you're part of my Freight Broker Bootcamp, that's my introductory course to help you get up and running. But this is my Freight Broker Sales Accelerator. This is, I put this course together because I've had hundreds of people ask me for specific and comprehensive and advanced sales training that they can use to leverage to get more clients, more shippers and grow their business. So I've been talking about this new Freight Broker Sales Accelerator program for over a month. And guess what? Tomorrow on Tuesday, February 9th, it's going to launch. I'm going to open up the, I'm going to, going to open up enrollment and I'm going to let 50 people, 50 people into this initial cohort, into this initial course. I'm only limiting it to 50. Now understand something. I have over 50,000 people on my email list. Okay. So 50 people is going to fill up really, really fast. Okay. So if you are interested right now, first of all, it's not going to be a free program. It's a paid program. Uh, and second of all, this is not for tire kickers or wannabes or, you know, or, or, you know, anybody like that. This is for people that are really serious about leveraging sales and modern sales strategies and techniques that I've used in order to get new clients. 
um, and that I've taught hundreds of others that have worked for me in the past in my brokerage as well as other other programs I've had. Um, so it's for those people, but you got to be pretty serious. So if you are serious, you're willing to invest and you really understand the value of learning how to sell and how it can change your life dramatically. Here's what I want you to do. The only way that you can become a part of the course or be considered to be a part of the course is to sign up for my wait list. So you can see a banner on the screen right now. It says freight broker sales accelerator wait list. You need to go to freightbrokerbootcamp.com forward slash FB sales. It's going to prompt you to enter your phone number because tomorrow you're going to get a text notification and that notification is going to be the link to where you can then enroll. You'll see all, you can go to the website. It'll, it's going to play a video and show a description of everything that's going to be included in the freight broker sales accelerator. And at that point, you can decide whether you're going to be one of the 50 people to get enrolled. Now, the advantage of being enrolled in this initial cohort is you are going to get a huge discount compared to what I am going to sell the course for later. Okay. The price will probably go up three times as much, you know, in future releases. Okay. And in, in future launches. But in this launch, I'm going to offer it very, very inexpensive for this initial group that are early adopters and that become founders in this new uh, this new program that I'm releasing. It's called Freight Broker Sales Accelerator. So if you are not on the wait list, <laughs> you're absolutely crazy, get on the wait list. This is me going to take this piece of my brain and transfer it to you throughout this course. Okay. This is going to be a live course that I'm going to be training. Okay. And it's going to be a small group of 50 people. Um, it's going to be a five week live course. We'll get all the, you'll get all the details tomorrow, but I really think you guys are going to love it. You're going to enjoy it. And I think the people that do take this course are going to have huge return on investment and, uh, and have some great stories to tell months down the road. Once they've applied all the strategies and techniques that I'm going to share and teach in this new program. So I'm super excited about it. It took me many years to get off my butt and finally create this. But uh, this has been a labor of love. It's kind of a passion project for me. I'm super excited. I hope you guys get enrolled. Make sure that you get on the wait list. If you're not on the wait list, you, you will not get in this course. You won't have a chance to get in this course, okay? So you need to be on this wait list. If you're not on the wait list, then you just, you know, you're, you know, you're out of luck, right? It's pretty much just going to be, you're going to get locked out of the opportunity to get in this course. You notice right now, I could have easily... I want to see how serious you are. I could have easily just put the link up here where you could have went to it, but I'm not releasing it till tomorrow. And I want to know that you're serious. So get on this wait list. You'll get notified tomorrow with a link where you can immediately click through. Now, here's the, here's the key thing. When I send that link out tomorrow during the day, it'll be during the day, you'll get a text notification. When I send that out, you better click that link and immediately get enrolled because I, I don't want to hear anything later of, oh, it was already closed. You know, I didn't get to it till 11 o'clock at night. Um, you know, and it's already, you know, we've already filled, filled the room and we've already got over 50 people in it. Okay. So you're going to need to take action quickly if you want to be a part of this. All right. So I've, I've left this to my community, to my students, and to the people that are heavily involved in these Freight Broker Bootcamp Lives. So you guys are getting first dibs, okay? And so I hope you take advantage of that. That's the big announcement. Get on the wait list for the Freight Broker uh, Sales Accelerator Program. So, all right. So let's talk about some questions. Let's get into some questions here. I am going to scroll through some questions. Let's see what we got. So now we're going to dive into some q and I'm going to try to do 10 or 15 minutes of Q&A best I can. If I don't get to your question, I apologize. Uh, I'll try to come back in throughout the week. And sometimes I'm able to answer that question. Or you can show up next week and I'll do another Freight Broker Bootcamp Live. And who knows, maybe I'll be able to answer your question. Okay. All right, so read it, reviewing through some of the questions here. All right. Thank you for the kind words, Joseph. He says, if you're not a member and you plan on becoming a freight broker, I highly recommend becoming a member. He uses it daily. That's He's talking about freight broker bootcamp. So if you're someone who's new, who's looking to get started as a freight broker, 
This is Joseph saying it, not me. Okay. I appreciate the kind words, Joseph. Thank you so much. All right. I'm scrolling through here for questions. Let me just find one. All right. I'm still looking for questions. Give me one minute here. All right. So here's a good question. Worried about digital freight market taking away from brokers job. Your thoughts on next 10 years and longevity of freight brokers. Okay. So I've said it a hundred times and I'll say it again. Thank you for bringing it up, Brandon. Here's the thing. Freight brokers, just like every other industry need to evolve. So if you are a think that you are going to be a freight broker who's going to be operating on in on spreadsheets and paper and file folders and chalkboards and Excel spreadsheets, you are going to fail. You need to evolve. The freight brokerage industry, the transportation and logistics industry is evolving just like every other industry. So you hear a lot about these, uh, you know, about these freight market these digital freight brokers. And so the only difference between a traditional freight broker and a digital freight broker is the fact that they better leverage technology. There's very little difference because there is never going to be an Uber for freight where they're going to be able to go to an app and instantly get connected with a, with a, a driver or a carrier. Freight is way too dynamic. There's way too many complexities. There's way too many layers. And the value of the freight is too high for any shipper to risk that. So I do not see that happening in the near future. What I see is some of the companies that are coming into this space and leveraging technology, I see them as becoming big brokers. So they will become big brokers, no different than other big brokers that are already out there. You've got big brokers like C.H. Robinson and Total Quality Logistics and Coyote and, uh, you know, and XPO Logistics and all kinds of other freight brokers, which are billion dollar plus freight brokers. But what you have to understand is there is room for everybody. There's not going to be one digital pl freight platform that's going to take over the world like Uber did in the taxi and the, you know, in the taxi industry. It's not going to happen. I've been, people have been saying this for over 20 years. You know, I, I started my business in 2003. So we're talking about almost 20 years now. People have been saying this and not one company has been yet to prove it. Matter of fact, all the big companies that are out there that are doing these digital freight platforms are all losing tons of money. They're not making money. They haven't even proven the model yet. So my suggestion is this, don't worry about what they're doing, but you do need to evolve. Here's the good news. You don't, unlike me, I went out and developed all my own technology. I invested well over a million dollars in my own software. But today, the cool part is if I were to start up as a freight broker today, I don't need to do that because there are tons of companies out there that are rushing into the industry because they see the opportunity to service brokers that have not best leveraged technology. So there are tons of transportation management software and systems and technologies out there to help you raise the bar from a technology perspective to make your offering more valuable and to provide that sustainability and longevity that you are looking for as a freight broker. So the bottom line is this, if you want to thrive in any industry, you need to evolve. I don't care if you're in the real estate industry or the taxi industry or the freight industry, or the insurance industry, or the software industry, you always have to be evolving. And as a freight broker, there's no difference. The problem is, is most freight brokers have stuck their head in the sand for so long and ignored technology that now it's kicking them in the ass. And so now some of them are playing catch up. But the fact is, you can catch up very, very quickly by leveraging tools like we talked about today, which are some of the greatest CRMs on the planet. There's other transportation management software and other softwares that can allow you to streamline your, your communications with your customers, with your carriers, with different vendors, and, uh, you know, and, and take a lot of the friction out of those transactions. And so I say this, I think it's one of the greatest times to become a freight broker because you don't have to do what I did, which was start from nothing and develop your own technology. You've got an amazing, uh, uh, 
assortment of technology out there that you can leverage for literally pennies, pennies. I invested millions into my software, millions. We built it all from the ground up. And if I could redo it all today, I wouldn't build any of it. I would just partner with other people that are already investing millions into that platform. So you have that advantage that I didn't have. And so there you go. Will there be competition? Yeah, sure. There's always competition, but the market is huge. And as population continues to grow, and we know for a fact that over the next decade, the population is going to continue to grow, right? We know that for a fact, demand for products being shipped from point A to point B is going to grow right along with it. And so can you as a freight broker, freight agent in this industry. If you find a mentor, you work hard, you continue to learn and you evolve, you'll do well. So that's my, that's my rant. Uh, thank you for the, the question and I hope that helps. All right, scrolling, scrolling. Yeah, uh, Patrick, I recommend, I recommend one of the top five, particularly as a startup. Um, I just explained to you, you know, building software is very expensive. And the problem with building software is once you build it, you can't just stop building it. You have to continue to invest in that technology or it will become antiquated. The greatest part about, about, you know, uh, you know, buying the software or renting software like you really are with these programs, you know, you pay a monthly fee for this software is that they're in reinvest, reinvesting a large percent of the profits back into the R and D and the development of the future of that technology. And it doesn't cost you next to nothing, right? You know, most of these software programs are going to cost you less than a hundred bucks a month. Many of them are under $50 a month. And some of them are under 20 bucks a month. Okay. So the, the cost of this is very inexpensive to leverage a CRM that's already pre-built versus building your own. So my suggestion to you would be, um, pick up one of the five or go, you know, or go find somebody else who's already built it, who has a good reputation. And uh, I don't think you can go wrong. Yeah. So um, here's an interesting question. Is the integration smooth between CRM and TMS? Most of the, C some of the CRMs may have integration, but the fact is, is that you really don't need a lot of integration between a CRM and your transportation management software because your, your CRM is focused much more on your prospecting. It's heavily focused on prospecting and potential customers Whereas your TMS is more focused on your existing clients, right? So from a prospecting perspective, once you convert a prospect into a customer, you can then bring that customer over into your TMS and, and, trend and, and migrate some of that data into there. So it doesn't take a ton of uh, integration between the two. I'm sure that some of the CRM providers out there uh, we'll be able to integrate. And I'm sure that some of the TMS is out there may allow for some integration, but I can't speak directly to it. Here's the good news. You don't need a ton of integration, particularly as a startup. So Jason has a question. What's the ideal revenue goal for a first year broker? Uh, there is no ideal, right? There is no average. There is no, I mean, that data doesn't exist. So here's what I'm going to tell you. I think that it's a very realistic for a first year broker or a first year agent to do $500,000 in revenue. And I think that that broker will probably, you know, let's, let's call it four to $500,000 in revenues is, is very, very realistic. Now, some of them will do more. My first year, we did 1.2 million. There's other brokers that have done more than me their first year. Okay. One of my past students did more than I did his first year. Okay. And you know, than I did, he's a past student of mine. And so I would say that very realistic with little or no experience that you could do four or $500,000 in revenue year one. Now, some of you will do more than that. Some of you will do less than that. But I think conservatively, if you put your, 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 uh, you know, you look at it from a, 
from a very realistic perspective, I think it's very realistic to do a half a million dollars a year. Your margins on that, so that's your gross revenue. Your margins on that will fall somewhere between 10 to 20%. So that's going to put you somewhere in the 50, uh, you know, somewhere in between, let's see, if you do 10% of a half a million, that's 50,000. If you do 20% of a half a million, that's 100,000. So your gross profit on that will be somewhere between 50 and 100,000, depending upon your profit margin. So it's a pretty good year one. Uh, you will definitely be profitable. You have very little cost basis because you, in order to do a half a million dollars in sales, you don't really need any employees. A solo broker or agent can do that all on their own. So good question. Thanks for asking, Jason. So here's a question. Uh, hey, Dennis, I'm a student. What's the difference between dealing with an owner operator and a non-owner operator? Are there any advantages to committing to either one? Well, the obvious advantage to owner operator versus non-owner operator is owner operators typically only have one truck, right? So they only have one truck. That's kind of the disadvantage compared to a non-owner operator who might have three or five or 10 or 50 trucks. So a non-owner operator will give you more access to uh, more equipment. Typically, you know, you'll get, you could potentially get access to more equipment, right? So if you have one owner operator who has one truck and you have one carrier who has 10 trucks, you've got 10 times the opportunity potentially to load that, that other carrier than you do an owner operator, right? So there's that, there's that side of it. But on the other side of the coin, the advantage to working with owner operators is that the owner is the operator. So uh, follow me here. You know, if I owned, if I were a carrier and I had 10 trucks, I would hire 10 drivers as employees to work for me. But in many cases, what you'll find, not all cases, but what you'll find is that owner operators, because they are the owner and the operator, they take their business very, very seriously. They take their job very, very seriously because they're the ones that are in the truck. It's their reputation on the line. It's their money on the line. Okay. And so, you know, if you find the right owner operators, you can get, you can develop a great relationship. You can get really great service because it's the owner that is in the, that's in the seat driving the truck in many cases. So, so, you know, there are definitely differences between owner operators and companies that have more than one truck. Um, I think there's pros and cons to both, but I wouldn't exclude either. You know, particularly early on as a freight broker or freight agent, you want to develop relationships with carriers that can that you can develop a mutually beneficial relationship where it it special helps you to specialize in your niche, whatever that niche is. You know, if you're in the produce niche, then what I see in produce is you have a lot of owner operators, right? Because they migrate throughout different parts of the country as the produce season evolves. At one point they're in California, sometimes they're in Texas, sometimes they're in Florida, sometimes they're in New York, sometimes they're in different areas, depending upon the product that's shipping. And so owner operators sometimes will work better for that. But in other niches, sometimes fleet, you know small fleets will work better. So it depends upon your niche, but I wouldn't exclude either. I think both can do extremely well for you as a broker or an agent. Good question, thanks. I'm scrolling through to get some more questions. All right. So here's a question from Val. How important are broker, shipper, and broker carrier contracts? Okay. So broker carrier contracts are very important and you should never do business with a carrier unless they've signed your broker carrier agreement. That's just a fact that needs to be done. If you don't do that, you could potentially be found negligent. Okay. And that you don't want to do. So you always want to have an agreement signed with your carriers. All right. So like we've got that out of the way. Broker carrier contract, very important. You always get that signed with every carrier before you do business with them, okay? Now on the broker shipper contract, the broker shipper contract, it usually works one of three ways. Either the shipper has a contract that they want you to sign because they want to control the contract or the shipper doesn't have a contract and you, and you, um, you uh, submit your contract, your broker shipper contract to them of which sometimes they are willing to sign and sometimes they are not. Now, here's what I can tell you. 90, uh, 
90% of the shippers that we did business with that did not have their own broker shipper contract. If they had their own broker shipper contract, they required us to sign it. And in many cases, we signed it as long as we could agree with the terms. But if they did not have their own broker shipper contract, 90% of the time, we did not require them to sign a contract with us. What we required them to sign was a credit application that, that made them agree to our credit terms and some basic terms. So it was a one page credit application, which in itself is also a contract. Okay. It's a credit application. They're agreeing to a legal terms. And we use that credit application as a way to develop that relationship. Okay. Because it guaranteed us in writing that they were going to be willing to pay our bills, right? When we invoice them, they were going to pay our bills, right? So it all gave a little bit of background of the company, gave all the details and they agreed to pay on our terms. So most of the shippers that we did business with a broker that did not have the, their own freight broker or their own uh, their own shipper carrier or shipper broker agreement, we did business with them without an agreement. So it is not a must, but it is a nice to have. And it's become more, a little more prevalent as of the last few years, but I would never walk away from a shipper because they did not agree to sign a five or 10 page broker shipper contract. I would simply go to a credit app, sign them up and then start doing business with them. You do not need a contract to do business with a shipper. Uh, it's not required by law. And um, as long as you have at least a comfort level with them, that you're going to pay your bills. You can always at that point, stop servicing them. If they're not paying your bills, um, you know, they may have some special requirements. You know, they want to see your insurance. They want to see your authority. But outside of that, there's really not a, pay, a lot of paperwork that needs to be exchanged with a shipper. So I hope that helps. Now, some people may argue with me there. Other people may say, you absolutely have to have a shipper, uh, shipper broker contract. I'm going to tell you, no, you absolutely don't. I built an $80 million brokerage, did over $200 million in sales. And I would say a large percentage of that didn't operate through a broker shipper contract. All right, I'm scrolling. All right, so I'm still scrolling down here. So here's a question from Amaris. A little off topic. What do you think of the idea of starting an age as an agent with Landstar to get experience before starting your freight brokerage? Amherst, I think starting as an agent is a great first step. As a matter of fact, I recommend that most people that don't have experience in logistics, that don't have a lot of entrepreneurial experience, start as an agent. Now, I didn't start as an agent, but I had been an entrepreneur for many, many years. I had a lot of sales experience behind me. I had no logistics or transportation experience. So it was a bit of a risk. I also had a little bit of capital to get started. So I started as a broker, but I would have absolutely no issue starting as an agent. And I recommend people start as an agent. And the reason being is because here's the facts. Okay. And this is just the bottom line. Being an agent is way easier than being a broker. And if you can't make money and there's way less risk and way less cost. And if you can't make money as a freight agent, you are definitely not going to make money as a freight broker. Okay. So starting as an agent is a great option. My average agent, and I'm not making any claims or guarantees, but I'm just telling you what happened with us. My average agent, the last year that I owned the brokerage, did over $107,000 in sales or in commissions, commissions in their pocket, okay? My top agents, I, we, we did commissions to top agents for over $100,000 in a month. One month, we've had agents that made over $100,000 in commission. So being an agent can be very, very lucrative. I don't want you to misunderstand. Even though you're in a rev share with the broker, um, it can be an extremely highly profitable business if you're good at it, if you learn the ropes, and if you're persistent. So um, again, I'm not making any projections on how much money you guys are going to make. Matter of fact, some of you are just are, couldn't make money if you if you had to because you just won't follow through. But some of you, particularly those that take my Freight Burger Bootcamp course, you've already seen some of my past students that have went on to grow seven and eight figure businesses. But that's the reason why I put this Freight Broker Sales Accelerator program together, because this is the missing element that most of you don't get. You don't understand the process of how to take 
a cold prospect and convert them into a customer. And that's what I'm going to share with you. So you definitely, definitely, definitely want to make sure that you get on the wait list. Here it is again. This is going to be one of your last chances, guys. Freightbrokerbootcamp.com forward slash FB sales to get on the Freight Broker Sales Accelerator wait list. Get on that wait list because I promise you, I'm going to be launching it tomorrow. You are going to get a text tomorrow, sometimes during the day. And at that point, you click on the text and that's where you can get enrolled. Okay. It's only going to take you like 60 seconds to get enrolled. But at that point, you will be a part of this program. You'll get all the details on how it's going to work. I'm super excited, but we are going to limit it to 50 people. Other people will be able to get access later. But again, the price is going to triple for sure. Okay. So let's get back to the questions. Couple more questions and we're going to wrap it up. Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Give me a minute. Here's an interesting question. Hey, Dennis, can I use someone else's name with better credit for my surety bond or does it have to be under my name? They have to be an owner of the company. So if you have a partner in the business, um, someone who owns equity in your business, who's a partner in the business, you will be able to utilize their credit, their social security number uh, as the uh, as the basis for your freight broker surety bond. Just so everybody understands, the better your credit is, the less your freight broker bond cost. The worse your credit is, the worse your freight broker bond cost is, the higher it is. So, so you can do that, but they will have to be an owner on business. Yeah. So they have to be an actual owner, a stakeholder in the business. So good question. Some of the biggest problems, we're going to wrap it up with this one. Some of the biggest problems, what are the current problems shippers have? The biggest problems that shippers have are probably in about five different buckets. Late pickups, which cause all kinds of issues because if they don't get dock picked up on at the right time, then other shipments are going to get delayed. Customers are going to get upset, right? You got late pickups, late deliveries, okay? You've got claims, meaning damage claims. You have rate volatility, meaning rates are going, are going up and down and there's a lot of volatility in the market. Those are some of the challenges depending upon your niche. Um, and then compliance would be another one, right? Compliance would be an issue because they want to make sure that carriers are vetted properly right? They want to make sure they have the proper amount of insurance. They want to make sure they have the proper authority. They want to make sure that they've got experience. They want to make sure that they didn't just get their authority yesterday and then now they're hauling their freight and they don't know what the hell they're doing. They got their CDL and they're just hauling your freight today, right? There's very few shippers that are going to be happy about that. So they want to, those are some of the pain points, some of the challenges, some of the issues, and some of the conversations that you'll have with shippers. Now there are, there are tons of others that, that, shippers have outside of the freight brokerage industry as it involves their, their, um, their supply chain, including vendors overseas, you know, delays in shipments from overseas because of things like the pandemic, um, you know, and just a whole, a whole breadth of other issues associated with, with logistics and supply chain. Those would be very specific to your niche, you know, in the produce industry, it's always weather, Right. Um, in the, you know, that sort of thing. So there's, uh, you know, capacity is always an issue, right? There's a shortage of drivers in the industry. So that makes it challenging for shippers, but at the same time makes brokers more valuable, right? Because the, because the more difficulty that a shipper has finding a truck, the more valuable a broker becomes. And so that driver shortage works in your favor. So those are a few of the issues and challenges. I hope that helps. All right, guys. So listen, here it is again. Thank, number one, thank you for joining me live. Number two, thank you for everybody who submitted a question. I will try to come back in here and answer additional questions. Number three, if you are curious, if you want to be a, become a part of the Freight Broker uh, Sales Accelerator, get on the wait list. And number four, if you're just, you know, you're, you, you haven't committed to becoming a Freight Broker or Freight Agent, you're just curious about becoming a Freight Broker or Freight Agent, Check out freightbrokerbootcamp.com. Trained over 8,000 students. 
We offer a 60 day, 100% money back guarantee. You won't be disappointed. And if you are, we will absolutely give your money back. No questions asked. That's my startup training to help new brokers and new agents enter into the industry and start getting their first few customers and cash flow and get everything up and running. Um, if you're brand new to the industry, you're just looking to get started, definitely check that out. Uh, if you want to become a part of the Freight Broker Sales Accelerator, get on the wait list. Have an awesome day. For those of you that are on the wait list, listen, have your phone close. Have your cell phone close because you're going to get a text. You're going to get a text tomorrow. And that text is going to give you, is going to say the release of the Freight Broker Sales Accelerator program. So have your phone close. I'm going to send it out. You'll have to click and get enrolled. Have an awesome day and we'll talk soon.